you further have to be very systematic because it's different what, pri pri what personal data or personally identifiable data are in the hands of the state. Uh, and these are further divided into those that are mandatory, like you have to enter your, ad your physical address and your tax returns. So you, you have an obligation to provide it. Uh, and others that are not uh, mandatory and uh, there you have a further classification of those you provide voluntarily and those that the state finds out by surveillance, uh, espionage or, or, or other legal or illegal means. Uh, and then the data in the hands of private parties. And there's uh, three kinds of law there. There's the law in Europe which is extremely exacting and demanding on how the data are handled and uh, you, as a user you have all kinds of rights to know where the data are and to allow or disallow the transfer of those data. Uh, you have the uh, US kind of view where data are mostly personal data in hands of private parties are assumed to be handed out by yourself voluntarily. You, you tell uh, your uh, local mega store of something or your video club if you still have one uh, uh, where you live uh, what and you tell them I mean that, that's vol assumed to be voluntary I surmise that this thesis is uh, broken down and I would put that forward as a question to the lawyers in the panel particularly uh, because if many companies providing the same service are equally sloppy about data protection then this market hypothesis that you can choose the one that better protects you and that will uh, increase data protection. If they are equally sloppy, there's actually a phenomenon of cartelization. There's, it's not a monopoly because you have many companies, but they work as a cartel, uh, not with respect to pricing, but with respect to this other differentiator in the market. And uh, the other thing that I would come back, uh, as one more provocation for the panel, uh, is that this split between intimacy and data protection uh, looked right 30 years ago. But as Bruce said yesterday, uh, I think it was Bruce, uh, yesterday in the main panel, uh, IT and the internet are data production machines. And we are inserted into those machines producing data. And now even some extreme uh, examples of intimacy provide digital data, which are recorded in a permanent form. And that would be, for example, uh, videos or pictures taken in parties or, uh, as we often see uh, on the net, uh, sexual intercourse being videotaped or photographed by the participants voluntarily and then being forgotten in motel rooms, uh, which is a, a, you know, a, a very complex trend uh, that, that you can see. So now your intimacy has also become a provider of data. Uh, and we should look back to that split 30 years ago and see what, uh, whether we can redo our thinking about uh, privacy in, in that sense. And also begin to find out and define, maybe one of the ways is legislation, to define what kind of crime it is, for example, to publish uh, a video obtained from a, for, from a camera that someone has forgotten or from a stolen camera. Uh, it's, it, you know, I mean, after, after a beach trip, you are very concerned that the memory chip in your camera is not used by someone, it's not found by someone. Uh, just uh, because, uh, I mean, even if you didn't do anything improper, you don't want uh, your belly to be uh, webcast <laughs> to the world. <laughs>